I, so sometimes I can hear coded language, a little dog whistles of what's to come in a project. And I'm like, okay, you've given me everything I need to know to make an educated decision. I'm going to say no, but I wish you the best on your project. It's not for me. I have a lot of friends who've done shows like this, um, whether it's like X on the beach or anything. And they're like going in, they're like, I know. I know what I'm getting into. I know it's going to be messy. I know whatever, but it's also going to help my blah, 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 or it's going to get me more social media. I don't know what people do things for. They all have their own reasons, but you know, it, you gotta, you gotta do what is right for you. And I don't pass judgment on people getting their coin. Yeah. No, I like to say yes to everything. Usually I just, usually do, but then there's no, I mean, moments like, like that. My goal is in life is to say no. Like I, from a business point of view, mm -hmm. like I think it's a good, like this should be learning how to say no and it's being hard. okay with it. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of feelings involved and you fear oh, I'll never work again. But the truth is at a certain point, you have to start making decisions that align with your personal ethics and your sort of compass because the more you take on – this is for anybody. Any kind of job where you say yes to something that you didn't want to do and you have to sit in that knowing you decided to go against your better judgment, that only weighs heavily on you. That's true. Now, you played a married guy in Uncoupled, yes. but, you know, listen, we've all been seeing your thirst traps, you know, Thank you. on, on Thank your you Instagram. At J.A.I. Rodriguez. And if you want a more exclusive look, go to my Patreon because it's a little spicier there. I it's didn't not, even know you had a Patreon. It's not only yams, um, which I also wish I could do an OnlyFans account and just do yam preparation and call it only yams. Um, no, but on well, my Patreon. Well, you could. I mean, so, no one's going to stop you. <laughs> during the pandemic. I would go live every single day, do shows on Instagram, Facebook, and I, for an hour, and it was my little happy hour time with the audience. And, and people were like, you should have like a YouTube channel or a Patreon. And I was looking for ways to make money. So I created like a Patreon, which is like a docu-series of my life behind the scenes. I have a lot of animals that podcast. And then I would post thirst traps there. And I stopped posting them to Instagram. And then I got this little following. So I created an own little tier of just thirst traps. These are things that literally I probably could post to Instagram and be totally legally fine with. Um, but I realized there is a there's a small contingent of folks that happen to think that this 43-year-old um, does good in a thirst trap moment. As someone who had the spotlight in his early 20s and was not seen that way, it's fascinating to me. And I'm, I'm in the space and era of my life, if I can steal a drag race term, where I want to be okay about sharing my sexuality in some ways, um, which I do very, very much so on, on my Patreon. And um, so there's like a tier for thirst traps. And it's funny because it's like $5 a month. And my friend's like, you should have, if you, because that's like the most populated tier. My friend's like, you really should just have amped that up in the beginning. I was like, I don't know. I'm not that, I, I'm not that kind of guy to like gouge people for like a underwear picture or a jockstrap picture, you know? Would you only do, would you ever do an OnlyFans? So I wonder, and this is the question, please comment below. Um, do you think in 20 years, in 30 years, that you and I will look back at this time and think, fuck, we should have done it because where the world is at now, no one gives a fuck. My concern is I do play a dad, you know, on a lot. Um, I have worked with more family central things. And I, I personally don't know about like filming myself in sexual acts, how comfortable I am with that in theory. I really like doing the on camera version of that where it's beautifully shot and there's a story and it's character motivated and it's not real. I think the underbelly of knowing so many friends who have OnlyFans or any of the sites similar and the struggle they face to a hold their boundaries. If they're like, I only, this is as far as I want to go. And the audience keeps pushing and pushing, pushing the idea of having to constantly keep fresh, content up there, getting scene partners if the, you so choose to do that, branding and marketing yourself. But the flip side is, big shout out to my friend Chris Salvatore, has ha a mansion behind Chateau Marmont. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. No, you can. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in LA. Mansion. Mansion. Top 1%. Does not have scene partners. Does not do the, 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 the things that other people do. And top 1%. And so when I look at his life and I, I look at, you know, the passions he's able to pursue with his music and travel, um, all because he shares 
nudity, beautifully shot. Because I got curious, I joined. Yeah, and I've 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 joined his at once. It was yeah, I mean I'm not shot anymore. by Lester. Big shout out who does I, sometimes. His. What I do is I join and then I immediately unjoin because I'm such a Gemini and I'm like you know unless I'm, I'm just, okay like I'm Cancer Gem like I'm Cancer but I'm and I'm I do just the like, same. I needed to see and I'm thrilled, but I, I don't, I'm just not going to. This is going to be one of these recurring well, charges that Kyle, nine years from now I've never looked at again. Do you know Kyle Kruger? He's no. like a hairdresser, but also an Instagram model. He has like two million followers on Instagram. He just started one. Similar idea erotica you want and to know i don't have two million followers you know what i mean and so my patreon really is like i have this great vlog called inside j which is like a diary yes pun intended and then i have a podcast called the poppy rodriguez podcast then i also just like giving behind the scenes of my life i'm really honest even my top tier executive producers they get to make decisions about my life um and it's fun for me it's like creating my own little tv network and um it's just i go to patreon.com backslash j rodriguez world for more information but it was the first time in my life that I felt so empowered to be able to create art on my terms. And, um, you know, so I don't know. Would you ever do an OnlyFans? Probably not. Yeah. But I, you know, like, you, you know, like, you know, because I have this, you know, it's almost mm -hmm. like this is full time. Like, I think if you're like a Chris and it's a full time thing, yeah. then that makes but sense. I, you, do you have you mental could. boundaries of what? You think like I'm like first of all a I, I just can't believe people would want to see that from me. I don't well, feel like yeah, when I go that. out I don't there, get, there is I don't that. get that energy immensely. Oh, I, when I'm at the gym I, I don't feel like guys are like on me. Same like here. That, you know I'm maybe the same it's way. we're looking at the people we think are hot and only them. Yes. And not necessarily looking at the paying customer who might not be the people you're looking at. Yes. But that being said, I also feel like my Patreon is enough. I give the behind the scenes, but like. I know, I know when I'm like 50, I may have a little regret. Um, you know, I just, I also think there wouldn't be enough people for it to be worth it. You know what I mean? I feel the same way. I feel like, and I share, which is strange because like I share everything here. Like I'll talk about anything. Ask me a question. I don't care. I'll give you a real answer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm not. I have no hangups about it. And I just think like, right, like Chris is very successful on yeah, it. Yeah, and, and by so, the way, does not align with like his thirst trap pictures chris is like this tall sweet soft-spoken kind little i think of him as a boy i know he's a grown-ass man but i've known him for so long when Who he goes was, home to his mansion every night little, but i remember when he was going home to a studio apartment that didn't have ac and he had his little keyboard and we'd play songs like he's such a kind person and people think of him as such like this honky heartthrob and he is but like he doesn't go around with a level of arrogance and all the other things that we impose on that kind of imagery. Right. I mean, even my friend David Hernandez from American Idol has an OnlyFans. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what his line or boundary is, but he's starring in Naked Boys off Broadway, and for him, it was a really tricky decision because he was like, I mean, I got booted off American Idol for being a gay stripper, and here I am years later starring in Naked Boys singing naked. Maybe I should just do an OnlyFans. And I think it's done really well for him. And I wonder if we're in an era where we're re reclaiming our sexuality and allowing to uh, the world to to view it at a cost, but allowing to view it or welcoming people in without shame. And if that is truly the, a, a, a liberating thing. My God, I could stay here with you for because this brings up so many more. But before we go, my final question. Uh, stay tuned for part two. We'll but, be back next week. Seriously, because yeah. then that brings up everything you just said, questions of cancel culture. Because to me, it's like one thing has absolutely nothing to do with I the other. I am very much. Can we just t talk to them really quickly? Yeah. And I'm so sorry because I feel like everyone has to go. Uh, just really quickly. Last thing. I, cancel culture is such a hot button issue. I also feel like, you know, calling something out for being wrong and then allowing a path forward to redemption for true, honest, wow, I didn't know or God, I want to get better. We have to allow some grace for those who eagerly want to make up for something they messed up on. Um, we have to allow a path for that because that's going to we, we don't just chuck people away who actually want to make a difference from previous bad behavior. I agree. That's and then it. we cancel people and then we're not really canceling them. Chris Harrison no. from The Bachelor has $25 million when he lost his job and now has a podcast that's people criticize it, but it's doing very well. I mean, hopefully, That's just one when example. You, hopefully the hope is when you know better right. that you will do better. Right. And real change takes time and earning trust also takes time. Um, and so I feel like I would like 
there be a path for redemption for folks who are earnestly sorry and apologetic and want to do better? I agree with all that. I could do a whole show just on cancel culture. And before we go, because for all the people who want to know, which I was saying you play married and uncoupled, but what is your current status on the WeHo, on the WeHo <sighs> streets? I don't know. Because there's I a lot of people that are going to ask me and say that I didn't ask this question. <laughs> I find that so hard with, to believe. With your thirst traps. I mean, come on. It's I don't, you know what's funny? I, I feel like my audience is so much older because I was like the baby on Queer Eye, but like the people watching are now so much older. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I, I give off vibes like I'm unavailable. Um, and I think that 